Hi, and welcome to question seven of the 2022 paper two for the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths. If you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send an email to shanetroy at gmail.com. So question seven here is statistics. It's a lot of reading, a lot of words, but if you take your time, hopefully you have um, success in, in picking up marks. And you see here this first part A, now one and two, sorry, one has got 15 marks for what looks like filling in a stem and leaf plot. Okay, so let's get stuck in. Uh, an animal shelter takes cats and dogs. The staff record the weight of each animal in the shelter on two different days. The day that they are taken into the shelter, and they're calling that day X, and a number of days later, and they're calling that day Y. It then gives a table. The table below shows the weights of 10 dogs. Now they're labeled from A, so the first dog is A, second dog is B, C, whatever, uh, on both days, day X and day Y. And then they give a table. So this dog A was 4.5 kilograms arriving and then increased its weight and then it's 4.8 after whatever number of days. And they're asking us to fill in this um, part one says, draw a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot to show this information. So really in essence, how these work, the, they're given the number four, five, whatever, and you're gonna fill in the decimal place here. So for dog A, it's 4.5. I think they're actually already increasing order, I think, okay. So this is 0.5. I don't actually need the decimal place, I don't think, okay. Um, so like I'm not going to bother putting that in. It's, it's, as long as we realize that it's, and the key here says uh, 6, 0 means 6.0. 6 so 4, 5 means 4.5. Now if I fill in all the rest, um, and it is by increasing size. I'm just making sure of that. So there's a 4, 9 here, okay. Then 5.3, another 5.3, then 5.5, and then 5.7, okay. Then they give us the six. Now, I have the answer done on the next page, okay? So because that's just churn work. You just try to be careful. Um, you maybe put a tick beside each one as you've done them, just so you don't duplicate one twice. You should, in the end, have A, B, C, to five, 10 dogs. You should have 10 numbers on the day X side and 10 on the day Y, okay? Now, even without even thinking anymore about what part two is asking, we likely or should see in all the different dogs, A through J, that their mass is increasing, their weight's increasing, okay? Because um, they're being fed, hopefully, and being, you know, maybe not even being exercised as much. So we would expect their weight to go up. That's, that, that, that's, 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 that's the expected thing. Now, part two says, what does the stem and leaf plot show about the weights of the dogs on day X and day Y? Okay, so let's go to the answer here in the next page. So that's the, the stem and leaf plot filled in. And it just shows that the increased weight. You can see here, it kind of peaks here, Okay, whereas on day Y it peaks later. So like, even, but even looking at the data itself, okay, um, it's entirely possible that we should be more explicit in our answer there. And maybe, uh, maybe I should have added in that like from, I've gained weight and I could maybe say there from day X to day Y, just explicitly calling out what the leaving plot is saying. And again, it's simply due to the, like those numbers there, and then they peak over here later on, okay? So hope that makes sense. Um, part three here says, R is the correlation coefficient between the weight of day on day X and the weight on day Y. Then based on the data in the table, pick the most likely value of R from the list below. Give a reason for your answer based on the data in the table. Now, if your data was giving like a, a pretty straight line like that, that would be a strong positive correlation, okay? If the data was going down like this, okay, it'd be a strong negative correlation. Now, this is strong negative, this is weak negative, weak positive, and then strong uh, positive, okay? Now, you could look at um, a quick graph of everything, okay? Um, that'll really show it, and I think I've done it here. Um, that's the, I think day X is the top one, okay? And 
day Y is the bottom. I'm not actually I'm sure which way it is. Okay, it might be the other way around. But either way you look at it, is that a strong positive correlation? It's going up, so it's positive. Okay, and that's the answer. Okay, I always find these questions uh, strange without seeing the data graphed. Okay, um, because they, and they are, I suppose, explicitly saying based on the data on the table. But you say that it's like it's going up in a steady way. That that's one way of looking at it. Okay. Um, now some of the answers from the marking scheme, I just have it open here on the side. One reason they gave is there's a strong positive linear relationship. Okay. And you can linear relationship if the slope here is going up by the same amount, it's linear or close to the same amount. Okay. Um, it's not going to be perfectly linear, but if, if, the, if that amount that they change by each time is is consistent, then um, that would be, you could argue, uh, linear, okay? Uh, they also say, this kind of, is kind of weird, if you graph them, the points would all lie in a straight line. So that's not as explicit as you might like, but it's just, it is true. So it should achieve the marks. Now, the next one here, part B, says, the table below shows the breakdowns of the animals in the shelter by type of animal, cat or dog, and by sex, male or female on a particular Monday. Complete the table by filling in the four missing values. Okay. And they tell us that five male cats and nine female cats gives us 14, so that's cool. Okay. We have to kind of back work this. And if you go, what can I do? We can go, and go the male cats and dogs is 11 and five is 16. Then, this is like Sudoku. Um, 16 plus something, okay, gives 40. So this is a subtraction there. So 40 take away the 16. And I should show my calculation. I should do the calculator, but whatever. Um, three take away one is two. So 24. So is 16 plus 24 equal to 40? It is. Okay. And then we can work out this column. So there's um, how many female dogs and cats are there? Well, there's 24 take away nine, which is 15. Yeah. And then the last one there, the, the row across, 11 plus 15 is 12. 20, 30, no, 26. 26. Now, this should add together to give the 40. So 26 and 14 is 40. And that's it. Okay, and this handy question, but again, you have to kind of back work it, which can be a challenge. Um, but if you if you try figure something out, you're going to get attempts. And there's a fair chunk of marks really for it. So like, in one of these cases, just do your best. Okay, I think I've shown that there. Now, three different animals were picked at random from the animals in the shelter on this Monday. Now, that must be the Monday they're talking about here. So this data here. Find the probability that the first animal picked was a cat. Okay. Now, probability has a formula. Okay. Um, it's not really necessarily given to you, but the probability of an event, okay, is given as the number of things that might happen all divided by the number of total things. Well, I know from the previous table that there's 40, isn't there? Yeah, there's 40 um, things that could happen in total, okay? Now, how many of them are a cat, okay? Well, there's 14 cats, so it's, it's 14 out of 40, okay? Now, this number should be less than one, and it is. Like, I could simplify it by um, putting the calculator and pressing equal, or if I look top and bottom, is there any number that will divide evenly at the top and evenly at the bottom? I, I think two will do it. So two into 14 goes seven times, two into 40 goes 20. Now, I could go decimal there if I wanted and just convert seven over 20 to a decimal, it doesn't matter. Now find the probability that um, all three animals picked were male dogs. So in essence, that's asking me for the probability okay, of a male and a male, and a male. At the back of it all, that's what's asking. Now, in probability, and is multiply, or is add. So, what's the probability of a, of a, of a male dog? Okay, so, uh, it was a male dog would be, out of 40, there are 11 male dogs. So, it's 11 out of 40. And means multiply. Another male dog, 11 out of 40, and multiply uh, by 11 out of over 40. 
the last calculator job, okay, I have it done here in the notes, okay, and I'm multiplying that out, I got this massive number here, and then it tells me to leave my answer as a decimal. Okay, the first question didn't specify. If you'd left it as a fraction, even unsimplified, you'd have gotten full marks, uh, or as a decimal, even as a percentage. Okay, um, that's usually how the marks scheme is applied. And this one here, I'm turning it to a decimal, 0 0.0207. Now, they want to three decimal places, so the seven is what matters. That's greater than five, so the digit prior to it goes up by one, and I got my 0 0.021. So, unlikely, in a sense. If you could multiply that by 100, it would be, what, 2.1% okay, chance. So not high in the scheme of things. Now, question seven, part D here says, the nine female cats were put in nine separate pens. Work out the number of ways in which this could have been done. And that is the number of different possible arrangements. Now, these kind of questions, to a certain extent, wreck my head. Um, I'm going to bring up my calculator, okay, and just point out that there is a button down here, the NPR and the NCR button, okay? So let's try to understand the question. Nine female cats were put in nine separate pens. Work out the number of ways in which this could have been done. Now, does the order matter, okay, is the, the always the question here. If the order matters, then it's going to be a permutation. If it doesn't matter, it's going to be a combination. So I really have two choices here, okay? There's nine cats in nine pens. So nine um, P9, or is it nine C9, okay? Um, now I'm just gonna go to the answer here because I have a little infographic in there, okay? So in a permutation, the arrangement of the items matters, okay? So it's going to be a larger number, okay? Whereas if it doesn't matter, then you're going to have a smaller number. I'm going to use the calculator there and do it both ways. Okay, so nine. I'm going to shift the shift button. NPR button nine gives me this number. Okay, or it could be nine shift C nine gives me one. Okay, it seems low, but whatever wrecks my head. Um, if you did it both ways, choose which answer you think makes more sense. That's the strategy. Okay, obviously knowing the answer. Um, but I'm, again, I'm always on the back foot with, the, with those kind of combinations, permutation questions, um, and that's on me, <laughs> but that's my uh, particular maths journey. Um, when you see per, like order or arrangements, it's either usually the NPR or the NCR, but in this case, the order matters, um, and that's why it's a permutation. Now, I'll just leave the answer up here. By the end of this week, 10 of the animals had left the shelter and no new animals had been taken in. If an animal was picked at random at the end of the week, the probability of picking a dog would be 11 over 15. Work out how many cats left the shelter during that week. So you can see there, just to get the attempt, I've gone, look, if you can figure this out, there was 40 animals, okay, in the shelter. They tell me that 10 left, okay? So the difference to them is how many animals are left over. Now, that alone will get you the, the low partial. Now, the probability is given by the possible outcomes over the total outcomes, okay? So, we know that we had no new animals, okay? Now, they give us the probability of it being a dog. Now, male or female is gone from this. It's just dog, cat. So, 11 out of 15, if you can see there that 11 out of 15 has an equivalent fraction, and we know that our t there's to 30 total animals. So, if I double this on the bottom, 15 times 2 is 30, I should do the same thing to the top. 11 times two is 22. So we know there's 22 out of 30 dogs. Now that means there's 22 dogs, okay? That's what that top number means. Then to find out the number of cats, it's the total number of animals in the shelter, take away the number of dogs, gives the number of cats. Again, that question, if you understand the scenario, um, it's a pretty handy question. But of course, understanding the scenario can be the trick. But like I said there, with getting the attempt, okay? Like, that's a great starting point. And then everything after that, on a, on a question, that, especially if you find probability tricky, like I do, you know what, that's not the worst return in the world, okay? Obviously, you want to get the five marks, but every, every bit counts. I think that's the end of question seven, okay? So, as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists.
See you on question eight.